Welcome to the Living Word, the teaching ministry of Pastor Fisayo Adeniyi, lead pastor of the Ransomed House Lagos. Get ready for enlightenment, encounter, and impartations by the Word. Be blessed as you listen. I have a word from God that will bless your life. We'll begin our journey today from Mark 25, and then verse Mark 25, sorry, Mark 5. And I read from verses 25 to 34. Mark 5. Are you there? Mark chapter 5. And then verse 25 to 34. And the word of the Lord says, Now a certain woman. Don't forget Luke 1 45 says, Blessed is she that believed. You see, the Bible likes women. There was a certain woman right who had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians now for you to understand the gravity of this you need to be a woman understand that there are certain things you cannot understand except you're a woman or even if you become i think people do trans now you there are still things you won't be able to get to have a flow of blood for 25 for 12 years is not something a man can understand understand you can say oh god spoke to me Mm-mm, this is not god speak to me this is an experience for a woman for you it is something you read about are you following what i'm saying the bible says she had an experience for 12 years she had an experience now follow me very closely when she had so suffered many things from many physicians she has spent all that she had and was no better but great was when she heard about jesus she came behind in the crowd and touched his garment for she said if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. The Bible says immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. When did she feel she was healed? Some of you are sleeping. This scripture, sir. When? 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 Immediately. Scripture says immediately. What's the definition of immediately? The definition of immediately is immediately. Only what I'm saying. It means now. Instant. Instantaneously. It didn't get home. Instantly. She knew. You know, I, 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 I was going to say, how do you know that the flow of blood has stopped? That's why there are things you cannot understand except you're a woman. Are you following what I'm saying? They know when it has stopped. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Bible says that she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? That means Jesus was not conscious of that miracle that happened. That means Jesus was not conscious of that miracle that happened. Something had happened. They are taking the food from Jesus' table before Jesus knew that the table of food had disappeared. But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? And they look around to see ah, who had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. For a few minutes, we start this journey this morning with what I've titled Audacious Faith. Look at your neighbor and say, Audacious Faith. Audacious Faith. Father, we thank you because the entrance of your word, we give light, give understanding unto the simple. As simple folks, we've come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer and I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. Let us walk according to your counsel, O God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you're listening online, I want to welcome you specially to 2023 with the Ransom House journey. You can have your seat in God's presence. Uh, Right. What a story we have just read. (laughs) What a story. Let me talk to you about five things that we saw in that story. Five things. Number one. The diagnosis, the flow of blood, what the medical doctors today call menogia, menogia, and the issue was 
a flow of blood that never ceases. That's what you call menogia. And that's what this woman had. A flow of blood for 12 years. Which is, you see, menogia means an abnormal and long menstruation that causes cramping and blood loss. So it never stops. If you have never married or you don't have sisters or you are not close to ladies, you don't know what we call cramps. Understand that? Of course, I tell people that if you are a new generation person, then you can stop cramps. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I've seen, I've taught it, I've seen it. I've, well, the working reality, my wife, she does not have any cramp. What she has is flowing. Blood has to flow because it's part of reproduction. Glory to God. If your blood does not flow, it means you cannot reproduce. And I can tell you that from the beginning, uh, it was not so. How did this happen that women began to have pain during their, during their period? It's because it's part of reproduction. And the Bible says to us uh, that after God cursed man, after they had seen, uh, he said, in pain shall they conceive. Can you see that? So it's part of the curse of the law. So you can stand because you are the redeemed of the God, Lord, and cancel it by faith. Glory to God. I'm going to say certain things to you by faith now that is going to radically transform your experiences in God. Because we are living too little to what God has prepared for us. It's, you, it's like you have a buffet and then you are fighting with people with gala. Are you following what I'm saying? You are fighting over gala when God has given you a buffet. It's time for you to move higher and hopper. Okay, so I said the scriptures are right in calling it. So if you read some Bible translation, they call it a hemorrhage. That's what that woman was going through. Because the amount of blood she lost is significant. Enough, enough to fill a maxi pad at least every hour for several weeks. That's what it means. Every hour, the pad is full. <laughs> but this is not for several weeks. This is for 12 years. Follow me closely. Number two, what can I see from this story? She had not only suffered from the sickness, but scripture says that she has suffered from many physicians. Oh, ah. Uh, you know, doctors, pharmacists, they have a way of not telling you they don't know what is wrong with you. But instead, they turn you to a guinea pig. Do you understand that? So when scripture says that they have, she had suffered from many physicians, it means they were just using her as trial and error. You have, have, you, have you seen, this is not typhoid, you have used antibiotics, yes. When last year, you told them, they will now say, ah, okay, 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 maybe you need to treat typhoid now. You know, after you treat her for, and you do not get better, they will not send you for tests. Are you following what I'm saying? If you go for those tests and they say, ah, it's not sepsis, uh, and then they will not send you for another test. They say, let us begin to check your heart, check your rate. They, what they have done to that woman was that they have given her all manners of concussion. But she didn't get any better. Number three was that she was alienated from the society. Very quickly open to Leviticus chapter 15. You know, Leviticus chapter 15. I want to show you something there. Leviticus 15, 25 to 27. Are you following me? It's a teaching class. Huh? And this is, you're going to have value for this. Glory to God. Glory to God. I can say that as your pastor, I'm not being paid enough. But, but what I'm about to share to you. Glory to God. Amen. Leviticus 15 and then 25. Look at what scripture says. Are you there? All right. The Bible says, if a woman has a discharge of blood for many days... Other than at the time of her customary impurity. Or if it runs beyond her usual time of impurity. All the days of her unclean discharge shall be as the days of her customary impurity. She shall be unclean. Every bed on which she lies, all the days of her discharge shall be to her as the bed of her impurity. And whatever she sits on shall be unclean. As the uncleanness of her impurity. Whoever touches those things she shall be unclean. He shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. If this woman was married, I can, I can assure you that the man had abandoned her. Because she couldn't be touched. They can't sleep on the same bed. I mean, they can't, she can't touch a plate. She can't serve you. Because if she serves you with a plate, the food is unclean. Everything she touches is so unclean. I want you to begin to get into the emotional and mental space of which this woman works. You know, we talk about depression. Uh, so I want you to understand what this woman had gone through and see how her mental state would look like and how her spiritual life would look like. Uh, everywhere she go, you know, she was supposed to be shouting or clean or clean uh, so that nobody touches her. Any furniture she sits on was unclean as well. 
Other people she touch, they become unclean. So if she comes to church, she won't hug us. She will sit separately. And the chair will be so unclean until evening. If you dare sit on that chair, you are unclean until evening. Glory to God. <laughs> I mean, there are things you don't put glory to God behind because it's just, it's, just, it's just amazing how they live at that time. And then number four, I found out in scriptures and you saw we read it, that she was also financially red. That means this woman had money before. But because of her condition, she had become wrecked financially. I don't know whether situations have happened to you before. A sickness, uh, uh, certain things in your family, a condition that just drained money. I mean, it just drains the money. This woman was drained out. Drained out. She was financially wrecked. They had turned her to a pauper. You know, the more money you have, they said, the more, the more you look for solution. Do you understand that? So if you're not feeling too well, you go to hospitals that are big, you go to pharmacy, just keep walking around. But you see, when it's the poor person, after he has gone to one, he goes back to God. Because there's no money again to go anywhere. So for this woman to have consulted many physicians, he told me that she had some financial resources before that amen came. And then number five, scripture says she had gotten worse. Instead of getting better, she had gotten worse. I don't know whether you have been sick before. And the more you take drugs, the more it seems you became more sick. I remember those days when I used to have pimples on my face. So people would tell me the things I needed to do. Nixodam, Babadam, all those kind of drugs. You see, you use all of it. And the more you use it, the more it comes out. So you are asking yourself, what are we going to do? And then eventually you meet somebody else who tells you, I have not used this one. <laughs> so you try another one, you discover sometimes you become lighter. Do you understand what I'm saying? So some people tell you, wash your face, do all of it. So you keep doing everything. But the thing remains resolute. Like, I am not going anywhere. Until eventually you say, maybe you should just stay. And then when you say you should stay, you discover that suddenly you just left. You know, but this woman had gotten words. With all this information you have, how do you think the woman will look like? How do you think she will look very frail, right? She will look very frail, not so much strength. I also think she would not be with friends and families. I feel she would have probably been abandoned or be alone. Do you understand? So this is the state where you met this woman. But scripture said that Jesus was walking in a crowd. And she went in the crowd with a frailty that tells you of somebody who is audacious. Meaning that if somebody who lives around the neighborhood had seen her in the crowd, her, her lack of her, this one wants to make all of us unclean, they could have shouted. So it was a risk to go out because you cannot have that kind of condition in a village and people will not know. Are you following what I'm saying? Somebody says small churches, news goes around very fast. That's the same way it looks. People will know she was going through that thing. Look at this. She was audacious. She showed a willingness to take a bold risk. She could have fallen. She could have been noticed. She could have been hindered by the crowd. But she went forward. What does it mean to be audacious? It means to be daring. It means to be fearless. It means to be brave and unflinching. And that's what we found in this woman. This woman was bold, was daring. You know, even in our days, imagine this happened now, right? So you have a faith that, let's use a very popular anointed man of God. Let's use Papa Deboe, right? So you want to, you believe that if you touch his garment, you'll be made whole. Don't forget that when children even came to Jesus, the disciples said, Carry them away. What are these ones doing here? So there was a protocol also around it. So that if you say you are going to touch uh, Baba Depoy, some people will not even let you get close. So for her to even come close at all, she was ready to take risk. She was fearless. She knew what she wanted. All through the story of audacious faith, we will see that we really also have no excuse this year. So your finances have run out. So you have, you have been abandoned by families and friends. So some people call you, you will never amount to anything. They call you unclean. Never mind. Don't worry. 
Don't let that deter you because you have a focus. You know where you are going. And if you will continue on that journey, God will show you great possibilities. That woman showed us that God's power is always available. That God's power is always available. That you can walk in so much of God's blessing if you choose to. It's a choice. Look at anyone and say, it's a choice. It's a choice. This year you must be determined and resolute. That you would have a testimony to share about God's power. About God's blessing. I've discovered if you and I don't step out. If you and I don't move out to God. If you and I don't dear God. Then we have little or less testimonies. Stagnancy is not the result of the devil's effort. It's a result of lack of movement. When I say lack of movement. You, you are not moving. You have stayed on a job and you've been complaining for five years, for ten years. You've not even dared to apply. You've not dared to step out. You've not dared. You've looked that they don't promote people here. Your salary when you come in is the salary you will take two weeks from now, two years from now, 20 years from now, 100 years from now. So whether you die or you go on, the salary is not increased. Yet you come to church and you pray. Yalima so pili akiyataba. Oh, it's easier for God to tell you to move out than for God to change the heart of your boss. Somebody following me. If a sick, frail woman can press into the crowd, what will deter you this year? What will deter you this year? I've told you what audacious is. Now, what is that faith? Because I'm speaking on audacious faith, right? So what is faith? What is faith? But you see, to be able to define faith, you must take a detail and define faith by looking at what faith is not. Faith is one of those concepts that you get well when you look at what faith is not. What is not faith? Because when I know what faith is not, I can understand what true faith is. Because many of us are working with the idea and with the concept that we are working in faith, but what you're actually working with is not faith. So you've come to church today and I'm going to bust your bubble. Because you see some people say, faith does not work. Faith always works. Look at him and say, faith always works. Faith always works. It works at all times, at all seasons, in all areas. Faith delivers. If faith is not delivering, it's because it is not faith. Can I say that to you again? If faith does not give you results, it's because it is not faith. The Bible says in 3.11 of the book of Hebrews, uh, Scripture says uh, that by faith, the elders obtain even a good report. No, that's 2.11.2 2 of Hebrews. Uh, by faith, the elders obtain a good report. That means to obtain things that you would have to come by the instrumentality of faith. Uh, you cannot obtain anything from God except through the instrument of faith. Uh, faith is that thing you need if you are going to bust out to the next level. Uh, Listen to this. The currency of Nigeria is the Naira. Are you following me? The currency in Dubai is the Dirham. The currency in South Africa is the Rand. The currency in the United States is the dollar. The currency in the UK is the pound. But the currency in this kingdom is faith. Faith is what you spend. God does not honor you by your bank account. God honors you by the faith that you walk in. So the more of faith you walk in, the more you are able to press into the fullness of God's mind. Is somebody following me? Are you following what I'm saying to you? Listen to this. What did I say? I said faith always what? You are going to speak to me. You see, we are done having that kind of church that we are just uh, being, being too and all of that. You are going to speak to me. Understand that? If not, I'm going to sit down here and I'm not going to move forward. And your service has not closed and you're not going anywhere. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right, so uh, you see, the, the, the violence must take it by force. I'm not going to raise a church that is dull. I'm going to raise a church that is bright and walking in the things of the Spirit. Glory to God. Glory be to God. So you've got, if, if something, if, if you would like something or, or, or a revelation gets at you, you are going to shout. You are going to rejoice. We are from the streams of faith. We are not from the streams of sad folks. We are for the streams of joyful people. I was glad when I was told, let us go to the house of the Lord. Why? Because there is a thing in the house of God. There is a countenance. When I see God, my life is changed. My life is transformed. So I'm not just happy coming to church. I know it is a place of my transformation. I know it's the place where I receive the tangibility of God's word. And my life is totally transformed, even by the reason of the sense word. 
And as a sense word is coming to you, it has the ability to move you from the back to the front. From down under, buried low, to being in the high places. The Bible says he takes the people and he makes them to sit with the kings and the kings of his people. Listen. What I'm telling you will deliver you from sitting in the merry place and takes you to sit on the mountain top so that people don't have to say where are you they know where you are oh there is a thing that happens that people don't look for a man you look for somebody who has not become resourceful you look for somebody who has not become known but when renown comes then people don't ask because renown will tell people where you are you don't longer have a private life your life becomes public because impact is not private is somebody following what i'm saying so I want to look at what faith is. And now to look at what faith is, we're going to look at what faith is now. Because when, when, when you see a suit, sir, uh, if I'm trying to describe what a suit looks like to you, what I can do is to actually show you what it is not. But that's not a good example. You know when bankers are first introduced to the bank, uh, because there is always what is call fake currencies coming around banks, uh, what they show the cashiers again and again is to show them real currencies. They don't show them the fake. So that if you are going to be in phone transfer, guys are going to bring dollars to you. What they will do is that they are going to show you dollars. You are going to be touching it. You are going to feel it. Just going to get used to all the signs, the symbols, uh, how it feels on the hand. Uh, so that when the fake comes, you notice this is the fake. This does not feel usual. So you take it and put it under, under uh, an ultra volunteer and it says, yeah, this is not it. What's happening? Because you are already used to it. So you can test it. Many times when we say we are working in faith, we are not working in faith. Because faith is tangible. Are you following what I'm saying? Faith always produces results. Praise, faith is energized. Faith is not docile. Faith is not passive. Faith is active. Faith is active. Faith is active. What faith is not? Very quickly. Number one, faith is not presumption. <laughs> It is not believing without proof. Oh, I know, I know, I know I'm healed, I know I'm healed, I know I'm blessed. Oh okay. God. What is the proof? Without proof, it is presumption. It is not faith. It is not faith. Many people think that faith is presumption, but it is not. There is a proof to faith. Bible says faith is the substance. You see that? Of things of four. There is a substance to faith. There is a tangibility. That word substance means tangibility. It means evidence. So it is not faith until there is evidence. You may not find the evidence with the mental sight, but there is evidence. Is there air? Do you breathe oxygen? Do you breathe? Have you seen it before? Does it mean it does not exist? Sometimes when you say, wow, your fragrance is so... Can you, can you touch the fragrance? So that the thing exists in the spiritual does not mean it does not exist in the physical. But that the thing does not exist in the physical does not mean it does not exist in the spiritual. I have not touched God. I have not seen God with my eyes. But it doesn't mean it does not exist. The proof of faith is not found uh, with the mental sight. Uh, or you cannot be perceived with the mental senses. Which means uh, your nose, your hearing, your smelling, your sight. But it is real and it is a reality. Until there is a proof of your faith, you are working in presumption. So the existence of what you are believing in, there must, it must exist. Exist in the spiritual. Exist. You know, I've, I've spoken to people, I've been pastoring for years now. And I'm telling people, how you say I'm not feeling fine. I say, oh, sorry, sorry, my dear sir. Uh, so what are you using? Are you using any drugs? Are you taking any drugs? I said, no, ha, I'm using faith. <laughs> I said, faith. I said, okay, that's fantastic. That's a good place to start. That's a good place. You are in a good place. And I said, tell me, tell me. How do you, what is that faith you are believing in? What is that thing that you are standing on? Say, I'm standing on faith. I'm standing on faith. Oh God, go and use drugs. Are you following what I'm saying? Because there is no proof. There is no evidence. There must be proof. If I had asked you, tell me, tell me what you are standing on. You say, I'm standing on 4th Peter chapter 2, verse 24. He himself uh, took my infirmities. By his stripes, you are healed. Uh. By his stripes, you are healed. Glory to God. By his stripes, you are healed. Uh. I say, what, what are you standing on? Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. He 
took away our infirmities. Oh, glory to God. I am the Lord that heals you. Bible says in 1526 of the book of Exodus, say, I am the Lord that heals you. So when I ask you, what is the evidence? You say, God said. God said in 1526, that's what I'm standing on. I know I'm healed. He said, I'm the Lord that heals you. Glory to God. So there is a tangibility. Can you see that? There is a proof to your faith. It's not existing because you can't touch that scripture. But what you can see is that God has said it and he will do it. The proof of faith may not be perceivable to the mental senses, but there must be a proof to faith. Whenever you are believing that God, what God has said, listen to this, if it's not going to be presumption, it must be what God has told you personally. Is somebody listening to this? Or what you have found in scriptures. So that believing for anything that God has not told you, or that is not in scriptures, is just presumption. Faith begins where the will of God is known. The Bible is the will of God revealed. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? I have somebody, have you received the gift of the Holy Ghost? Baptism in the Holy Ghost. He said, he said, he said, I have, I have. I said, can you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost? And I say, no, no, I can't do that. Sir. Oh, Tigba, you have not received it. <laughs> if you have received it, the evidence will be com coming out. It's not presumption. If there is a result to it. Are you following what I'm saying? Do you get number one now? What I say, faith is not what? Don't worry, faith is not presumption. Speak loud. It may affect you. You may discover you have not been walking in faith. <laughs> that does not mean you should not communicate with me. Are you following what I'm saying? Uh, it will hit you. The word of the Lord corrects, instructs, and directs. Number two, faith is not all. Okay? Faith is not all. Listen to this. Hope is futuristic. Faith is now. Hope is for the future. Faith is now. Let me give you scriptures. Romans chapter 8, begin to read from verse 24. The Bible says, For in this we hope. We were saved. Now, hope that is not seen is not hope. For who hope for what he has not seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it in patience. So, hope makes you wait. Therefore, hope is a good waiter, but is a bad receiver. You will get that. You can write down that. That hope is a good waiter. It makes you wait, but it doesn't make you receive. Romans 12, verse 12. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. That's hope. <laughs> we are going to, it's going to make you patient in suffering. Ada. You have you had that word? Ada. Ah, he go better. He go better. He go better. You see, all this he go better is what will keep you from being fallen and depressed. So hope is a good thing. But it will change your life. You hear people say, I will get a job soon. That's not fatal. That's hope. I hope you know. <laughs> I'll get a job soon. I'll get married someday. Nigeria will be better. That's hope. You see, every Nigeria is just hopeful. <laughs> eh, because in Nigeria, there is no evidence anywhere that it will be better. But we keep hoping for a better Nigeria. Glory to God. In fact, they are selling renewed hope for you now. Your hope is so bad that they need to renew it. Ah, it's like data. You renew it. They are renewing hope for us now. Glory to God. Hope, like I said, does not change things. That tells you renew. Oh, sorry. I'm not getting into politics. All right, let's continue. You hear people say, I'll get a job soon. Hope is what keeps many Nigerians alive. Hope without a definite action will not change anything in your life. Are you following what I'm saying? I, I want to make an example of this. Uh, two of you, can you come? Uh, you, you are friends, you dress, you are wearing the same shoe. So come. come. Uh -uh. Fantastic. Hallelujah. So, because I want you to get the old part. Do you get it? Now, assume that this man. Aha, uh -huh, so it's very simple, very good. You are from Abia. Aha, uh -huh, I know, I know. It's not, it's not revelation. I know. All right. And this man is from Lagos. You get that? Now, assuming that they just met, 
So they, they went to the same university and um, so they were in the learning at, at a certain time together. So let's assume they now met, this is VI, right? You came out of a restaurant and then you saw him. And they now greet each other, greet each other the way you. That you're just seeing yourself after three years. Now imagine they greet themselves like this. And I'll say, ah, you know how boys, how men talk now. Papa, we go. We supposed to see you. We supposed to talk. Oh. Do you understand that? Ah, we supposed to hang out. He said, yes, yes, yes. We are supposed to do it. Okay, so how we go be now? Say, ah, we will do it. We will do it. And then they greet each other and they go. Will they see each other? Tell me. Will they see each other? Will they talk? You see, many guys, that's what we do. You understand that? Oh, we are. We supposed to chat, Baba. News day grand. And they talk. News day grand. We supposed to talk. We supposed to chat. And there is no talking. So that after two years, they will meet each other again. And then, okay, again. <laughs> Baba, we supposed to talk. Oh, you fresh. You fresh. You so fresh. Tell me now, cause so for me, Baba. They make we see. Make we see. So they tell each other, let us see. But you know that this is after two years. They will depart again. They will not see. You know why they don't see? Because there is no definite time. There is no definite space to that action. It stopped being hope. So they are open one day they will hang out. But it stopped being it if one has said, what's your Friday like? If only one say, can we do two? I know two is not good for me. What about five? So it is more definite now. So they are not open, they are actually acting. The difference between hope and faith is that faith is active, hope is passive. So that he is a good waiter. He's waiting for the day they will see. But they never receive the reality of meeting each other. So koinonia is not available because of that. Glory to God. Have your say. I thought you were going to celebrate them. Listen to this and I think this will really bless you. You might need to write this down. Hope will make you smile while the ship is sinking. But faith will keep the sheep afloat. Hope will make you smile while the sheep is sinking. But faith will keep the sheep afloat. I know this relationship will work. This relationship will work. Do you notice that faith is in the now? Every time you use the word will, or will, 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 Talking about the future, you are not actually working in faith, you are working in hope. I'll get married one day. I'll have my car one day. I'll have a job one day. I'll have revelation of God one day. I'll do ministry one day. It's hope. You know, it looks like positive confession. It looks like you are talking right, you're talking faith. It's a lingua we have learned, it does not mean it's faith. Because faith speaks from behind. Faith is finished. In the language of faith, is present participle. It's definite article. When you're talking about faith, you are using the word, I have a job. I have a job. Somebody say, how do you know? You say, I found it in scriptures. God told me, I have a job. I'm married. Where's your ring? You, I am married. This is not, I am married to Jesus. Satan, leave me alone. No, 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 no. This is not that. This is not that. This is true walking in faith. Somebody understanding what I'm saying. Faith number three is not positive thinking. I know we read a lot of those books, positive thinking, mental health. <laughs> some holy and unholy gibberish. Faith is not some deep-seated psychological thing. Eh? It is not speaking to the cosmos or some force of attraction. You know that law of attraction. So when you speak some things, it is released and some things begin to work. You have come to pick that for your life. <laughs> People have said that, done that, did that, all of that, and they have not seen any of that. Glory to God. You know, what we call principle, sometimes I just lie to ourselves. Because if it's a principle, then if I hack it and do the same thing, I should get the same result. It's not so. Positive thinking is backed by the mind. The result is that you start feeling good. And it works. Because if you start feeling good, you will think good of yourself and you'll be able to take some risk. Because you think you are good of yourself. But it is backed up by the mind. Faith is backed up by God. 
faith is not a feel good talk. Faith is a God thing. It's a God thing. It's not what you tell yourself to make yourself feel good. No. Faith is of God. What gives result to your faith is God. And then number four. Faith is not denial. Oh, you help me teach that neighbor of yours and say faith does not deny the fact. I'll let you finish right so that you say it with boldness and confidence. Are you done writing? Look at your neighbor and say faith does not deny the fact. <laughs> You're listening online. I need to tell you personally like I've come to your room now. Faith does not deny the fact. Doesn't deny the need and the want. The fact that you were sick is a fact. It's a fact that there's no shit in your account. It's a fact. No money. It's a fact. But guess what? Fact changes. But God's word never changes. Oh, when I say fact changes, somebody, somebody looked at me and said, What are you saying? You know, if you had met me some 15 years ago, and you had said that I was a student of the University of Learning, then you are telling me the fact. But if you look at me now and say you are a student of the University of Learning, no, that's not a fact. It has changed. It is subject to change. There was, if you had met me a time and you say, Isaiah is about six feet tall. He is not married. He banks with Oceanic Bank. Correct. But if your Johnny Bank never is, not, doesn't exist anymore. So you see that the fact has changed. It has. But God's word is unchangeable. That's why I tell people, build your life on the unchanging thing. If you are a good engineer, you will build your life on an element that cannot be affected by time and weather. That's God's word. Build your life on God's word. Listen, the woman we are looking at, she knew she was sick. She didn't deny that she was sick. But she refused that that dictates the fact of her existence. She refused that it dictates the condition of her existence. Listen to me, the problem is not you denying the fact. The problem is that you are letting that thing dictate your existence. Therefore, because you are not married, you are sad. Because no man is asking you out, you feel you are not beautiful. Who told you that is beauty that makes people marry? Who be see who bewitched you? Have you to see ugly people get married? I mean, ugly by all standards. Grace happened to them, they found grace. Everything you can say, somebody is ugly, they are ugly, they are married. Short, pole, dark, confused complexion, they are not dark, they are not light, you know, and they are married. So who told you that it's because you are not fine that you are not married? Who lied to you? You are letting it condition your existence. Who told you that the best job you can get in Lagos is to work as they said it is not, they said it's front desk, now it's not reception. They have packaged everything. Front desk officer or that you're a reception. Who told you that's the best you can get? You are letting your result. Somebody say, I can't do better. I got there with the third class. So that should, that should now be what, the, what determines your existence. Oh my God. A third class life does not mean I will live a third life or the third class life. Why? Because I serve a first class God. He's going to take me to spaces, places where my certificates can never take me to. He's the God of amazing possibilities. Sir. It's not who I am. It's not what I have. It is who I serve. It is who is for me. Scripture. It was this understanding Paul had. He said, God be for us. Aye, if God be for us. He said, who can be against us? I like the word in translation. He says, who then be? God be for me, who then be? If I wrote it, I would say, who would be them father? Faith is to agree with the greater and unchanging truth of God's word. He says it's not good for a man to be alone. 
I know I'm not alone. Oh, the guy, I don't know what's taking him so long, but I'm married. Glory to God. I'm, I'm asking the condition of him meeting me. I'm giving him divine speed. Uh, because he does not have money, it's the reason he has not come. Uh, so God, I receive financial prosperity for him. Uh, thank you for financial prosperity for him. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, that's how you should pray some prayers. Because the guy is actually not far from you. He's very close to you. He's just thinking, I don't have enough to take care of you yet. The moment he enters into rest, he's coming for you. So that your prayers to be answered, God has to bless some people. Right. If you have this understanding of how complex of things work, you will understand that the way you are doing is not deliverance you need. It is financial blessing. The guy is not far. Many times they are not far. Stop going to parties to find a man. They are not there. They are not. The ones that want to sleep with you are the ones. They are not there. It's close. I agree I'm not feeling too good. But by God I'm here. I agree there's no money in that account. It's okay. But I'm the rich of God. Glory to God. I'm the blessed of God. Oh, for I know, for I know. I'm persuaded. It's not I guess. I know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich for my sake, he became poor that I through his poverty might become rich. Glory to God. We don't make small plans here. Can we make good plans? How does he seem to live down the road? You are not there yet, but you are already thinking I'm coming down the road. You know what down the road means in Lekki, right? Do I have to define down the road for you? Eh? Down the road is Victoria Highland. Down the road is Ikoyi. Down the road. I remember, I remember one time myself and my wife went to a restaurant at Via. And my wife said, this is a good place to live. I said, I agree with you. Oh, utterly, absolutely, there is nothing wrong with living in this kind of... This is awesome! Awesome! Only a stupid man will like a gallant more than a bet. I've been in two. I can tell you the difference. I was driving a Misty Bushy Gallant 1989 series. Oh my God. It took diligence to drive that car. It took diligence to drive that car. And the first time I stepped in and I started driving a Toyota Camry. I said, God, it is good to serve the hey, The difference is so clear. It's not so hot. It's not because it's not hot. It's because the condition inside is different. I discovered that the roads were not that bad. It was the absorbers that had problem. I remember a case, you see, but don't deny the truth. I remember a case of a woman. You know all this faith talk, that, all this jargon talk that you broke off faith, she went to the UK, and then she was, I saw, I saw it on Twitter, she went to the UK, and then she was sick. And she couldn't go to class. And in those places, you don't just abscond like you do in Unilag. You understand what I'm saying? You don't just stop going to class because your visa is because you are a student. So she, she was supposed to be in class. So she was in class. So they sent her a mail and she responded by saying she was not in class because she was drunk. So they responded and said, if you are strong, then come to class. They said she is strong. So she can't come. So after three months, she returned and they said she should first of all go to the home office. You are no longer a student here. You know what is going on. It's because she's stupid. That is not faith. That is stupidity. Are you following what I'm saying? If you are actually strong, all your class, you go to class. You go to class. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Leather. Leather. We say I'm strong. You don't say it in writing letters. You say it to your spirit. You are strong. You are strong. You are strong. And if you are strong, you are going to act on it. I'm going to teach you how faith works. How you put faith to action. You, you're going to work on it. You're going to act on it. That's what this woman did. <laughs> faith is not neglect, number five. I need to move fast here. Faith is not neglect. It is not faith when you neglect your responsibilities. <laughs> faith is not a neglecting your health and living foolishly. You keep taking one kg of soda every day. 
and I'm telling you this soda is so much sugar and you are telling me my body is a temple of the living God no brother foolishness is killing you are you following what I'm saying I'm telling you that you, you cannot say you know you know um, 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 what is in their amp now they call it recreative drugs now in some country so you say you know these are just recreative drugs I just miss it with alcohol your kidney will be it's not, it's not, it, 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 it's foolishness. It, say, I ah, know you don't understand it himself, but my infirmities upon the cross. Uh, there's nothing I can do with this body. We live from the inside out. <laughs> inside out, spirit, ah, man. You kill yourself, brother. That's not faith, that is neglect. I ask you, how are you going to play your house rent? Despite the blessings God has given you, you did not save, you did not keep. You say, you know, the Lord shall supply. We don't bother when we get to that bridge, we are going to cross it. One Lieja daily, they will send you out of the house. You will not say the faith has failed. It's because you are not, you are stupid. Sorry, I shouldn't use that word, but that's what is working. Faith does not negate the other principles of God. Principles of God, like wisdom, faith does not negate it. Faith does not negate vision, it doesn't negate plan. The life of faith teaches us to live wisely. To make right choice. I ask you, have you read for your exam? Have you read for that certification? Exam you are about to write. Have you read for that professional course? Say, God's don't fail. God's don't fail. What's your plan to pay your rent? God has sorted it. Faith is not neglect. If I'm not trusting God to send money, then I, am, I must be confessing and thanking God that I have received the money. Do you understand that? Yeah, he will take care of you and you sleep. Oh my, oh, but I better raise your hands up to heaven. If you don't want your loads on the street, uh, raise your hand and say, Father, thank you because I've received the money. The rent has been paid. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I see the receipt right now. Glory to God. Get off your feet and start walking. Not by sleeping around. If you start sleeping in your house without walking, you will, eventually you will sleep on the street. Are you following what I'm saying to you? Who paid to walk? Number next. I think that's number six. Faith is not a ticket to paradise. It doesn't mean now that you live by faith, you will have no problems. Because that's what some people think. <laughs> In this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. It's the overcomer's promise that makes us happy. That make us joyful. Not because there is not going to be trouble, but we know that the trouble does not deter us from walking in the realities even of God's promises. There will be challenges. Listen, Jesus had to pay his tax. You and your servant, master, do you pay tax? That's how they came to Peter. You see, if they did not pay, they will send them out of the temple. Jesus, imagine Jesus being sent out of the temple. If your faith does not deliver one Lienli, they will send you out. They are not ready to joke with you. They were ready to send Jesus out of the temple. But they couldn't face him, so they sent his disciples to him. So they said, Do you and your master? Because we know you have not paid. You and your master. Oh God, glory to God. Do you know what happened? He said, Go. Go, go, go now. Go, Peter. Don't worry, they want to get us, but go to the go to the river. Take the first fish you see and open his mouth and come and pay them. Do you know what do you think that they, do you think there's there are fishes with money in their mouth? The moment Jesus said it, the fish was with. It was the word that put the money there. The released word made the money available. Is somebody following. Faith is not. Do you know Jesus? He had to heal the mother of his associate. Peter's mother. It's always, it was always, 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 always Peter. It's always, always Peter. It was Peter's mother that got sick again. It was always, always Peter. You know, there are people that are just troublesome. Your anointing must work. If it doesn't work, their life will be very difficult. It's because of them that God anointed you. It was Peter again. His mother was sick. It's difficult to raise a child that talks that much and you will not have a dick. And that was what the man was finding. It was, the mother was fine. I would, you see, Jesus went and healed the fever. Killed the fever. You 
know that if Peter had lost his mother, it would have had the ministry. Because Peter was bold. He was the only one saying, people come and see you. Come. <laughs> I'm telling you, he was the one talking everywhere. Good talkers are necessary if a vision will grow. You don't need calm people. You need people who are bold. I say, hey, nah, just, <laughs> they would all be talking everywhere. Now imagine how he has become the face of the ministry and the mother died. Trouble in the ministry. The accountant denied him. The accountant, Judas, that's the accountant, denied him. Very difficult. That's why the accountant in my house is my wife. If she denies me, she's denying me. So she can't deny me. Are you following what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? This, this, this is are real. He was betrayed. He had people leave his ministry. You have to understand that faith is not a ticket to utopia. Because some people believe that when you start living by faith, everything just aligns. If it was so, then we wouldn't have to fight the fire of faith. The only fight the scripture tells us to fight is not to fight devils and demons. The only scripture, the only fight the devil tells you, the scripture tells you to fight is not to fight your mother-in-law or mother-in-law or mother-in-fight. The only one it tells you to fight is the good fight of it. The good fight of it. The good fight of it. Number seven, faith is not the ability. This is very important, especially in this generation. Faith is not the ability to override the will of others. Faith is not domination. It's not witchcraft. Faith is not manipulation. The lady has said no, let her go. Then I'm believing God, she will change her mind. Ah uh-uh. ah. Uh-uh. And then you take it to me. Father, 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 he's still now change it. Oh, I believe you are my wife. Oh, till Lord. This one, just let her go. You can't use faith to make a person do what they don't want to do. I remember a young man came to me. I said, I should do something. I said, by God, I am not doing it. And then I saw him three months later. He said, that thing, I said, I said, I'm, I've given you an answer. He said, I'm praying, I'm believing that you will change your mind. I said, you must be stupid because I'm not going to change my mind. So somebody came to church today with a jeep, a white jeep. Then you came. No, I know that by information, not revelation. Understand? I know that God told me. I know by information. You understand that? So you now go and start saying, Lemo Calabar. I receive this jeep in the name of Jesus. I receive. No, sir. No, sir. That's not how it works. If you need a jeep, you talk to your father. He's going to send you a jeep. Not that jeep is going to send you a jeep. If God now wants to send you that jeep, he's going to talk to that person. You know, we have become a very manipulative generation. Don't go around confessing another person's wife. Don't go around believing for your neighbor's pets. Because these days I discovered that people are even confessing for cats. How did that even become a thing? I don't understand. Faith doesn't work that way. What then is faith? Ladies and gentlemen, what then is faith? For the purpose of this study, I'm going to teach deeply on what faith is. That's what I'm going to teach on in Faith Up this Thursday. You have to join us on YouTube. Homie Seller, 7 p.m. You miss that service? Oh my God. I'm going to teach deeply on what faith is. Because many of us, it's not faith. It's not faith. It's not faith. You're just, you're just walking among God's people. You know where? You know, you know there's what is called Christ, Christianese. You understand that? Christianese is when you have stayed so much with Christian, you say, you are blessed. Uh, my wife was telling me of, of, of a person. Uh, who is a Muslim? We know she's a Muslim. But when we call, I, I, I say, ah, come and invest in that place. Yeah, the money is not enough. And it is where? Ah, ah. You understand? It is where? That's a language you expect a Christian to have. It is where? And then you say, ah, God bless you, man. Ah, ah. You know, they, they have learned the language, but it does not mean they are part of the covenant. You may learn the language, it doesn't mean you are part of the covenant. That's why I'm teaching you covenant principle. That's what I'm teaching you about the covenant life. For the purpose of this study, what is faith therefore? Faith is believing, confessing, and acting on God's word. Three things there. Faith is number one. What did I say? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Number two. Number three. Faith is believing, confessing, and acting on God's word. 
everywhere you go, if any of these things is missing, it is not free. Now, because I said this is not what is faith teaching, let me now go back to the story of that woman. The audacious woman. That's where we started from, right? Can you still remember? Now, certain things are important here. Because it was what changed her life. And it will change your life this year. Are you following what I'm saying? That's why you, this teaching has, has been practical, right? So, it, it's not, uh, I'm not just, I'm, I'm telling you how you can make it, how you can work in it. How you can make it a reality. Alright, so I'm going to give you simple points about this woman. That, that makes it very easy for you to work in it. Understand that. So, the first thing we found in this woman, these are the reason why she was audacious. If you're going to be audacious and you're going to see performances this year, you're going to see audacious performances this year, uh, one thing you've got to do is that you must, you must, you must. Glory to God. Next week, all the children are going down there. Can you celebrate God? We have to pity the woman and the mother. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, that's the necessary catch your breath. Let's go back again. All right, so what did I learn from that woman? The first one is that she had. Oh my God. You see, it's very simple. You see, faith is not something that is for the big people, the men of God. The anointed with the rosary. The anointed with the big chain and the bishop with a chain that touches the belly. You can walk in faith. What's the first thing we saw in this woman? Was that she had. Romans chapter 10 and then verse 17. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Oh, my father and Lord says faith comes by hearing until your ear begins to ring of God's word. So that when you wake, hell in the morning, what's ringing is God's word. When you face a circumstance, that wants to challenge the reality of God's promises. What comes out of you is God's word. I mean like a popcorn when they put you under pressure like a popcorn machine. And then you are under fire and they are turning you like this. What's going to be coming out? Instead of popcorn, it's going to be God's word. I know that I can go through these things because he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. This is the faith that overcomes the world. If this is the victory that overcomes the world, evil our faith. I know for certain I'm the head and not the tail. These are the things that just keep popping out. They are sacking people. The Bible says he will preserve my Lord. He will preserve my Lord. If there is only one person left, I'm the one. We close the office when eventually they shut it down. Or I live by myself. Are you following what I'm saying? She had. It was what she had that developed faith in her. It was what she had that made her believe. She knew if she said this man, her pain would go. So I perceived what was going on was that there was a certain woman probably by the name of Esther. This is just perceived. So don't say, this is not scripture. Glory to God. But for her to hear, there must be a teller. If there's a word like that, somebody must have told her. Right? So I perceived that somebody had gone to the crusade of Jesus. Or somebody was there at that room where they opened the roof and put the man down. Somebody was there. And that person said, this one was dead. As, what's wrong with you? <laughs> this man can heal you. Because the person was lying almost dead. And he only said, arise. And he arose under my koro koro eyes like this. How do you say Adawa? He said, Uchenu Wedu or something in Hebrew. He said, I, I saw it like this. He rose. And every one of us said, by me, he rose. You know how those people who share stories say it. He said, I tell you, I tell you, if you see that man, I tell you, don't you? I tell you. And that was what she had. When she had that and had the miracles of Jesus, he developed faith in She believed. She believed that if I can see this man. So you know what she told herself? So, but first of all, let's go through the process. First of all, she had. What are you hearing? Twitter is telling you that the forecast in 2023 is terrible. You know, some of you are so afraid that if, if a candidate should enter, our own has met us in this country. Some of you are so afraid. Whoever wants to enter, let him enter. If I let him enter now, they don't have to wait for February. Let them give him the key. 
Whoever enters, we never even live by this economy before. We live by the economy of heaven. The Lord supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory. Not according to the roles of Nigeria. Not according to the governor of Nigeria. Not according to the president of Nigeria. The Lord supplies all my needs. All my needs. It is what you hear. Listen, if you will live differently this year, you must hear differently. You must be intentional about hearing God's word. All these coming to church once and having sabbatical for two weeks, you can't hear like that. One word on a Sunday for a week, hear like that. Because the voice of doubt you hear is persistent. The voice of unbelief is persistent. The moment you leave this place and get, you don't have to get home. As you on the radio or take up your phone, you start saying that somebody they have killed somebody. Nigerian police have done it again. So that even as you are going out at night, you are looking around here. The voice of doubt. Therefore, you must tell yourself, I will increase my hearing of faith this year. That's why there is faith all. Every Thursday, not like we'll be sending it in. Oh, it's time for faith up. It's time for faith up. It's time for rubbish. They don't tell you that it is time for work. How come you wake up? How come? I thought you said you are tired. But you are tired the other day. Why did you wake up? Tomorrow morning you are going to wake up. Oh yeah? Before night falls. Sometimes I'm leaving my house. 5 a.m. And I see some people dressed with makeup. They are standing on the ground. One kilo shelling. What happened? What really occurred? What's going on? But you tell yourself, you give excuses to hearing. You need to hear this word that I'm sharing. You need to hear it again. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing. Even the word of God. Imagine if she has not heard. Imagine someone has not told her this good news. That means she would never have been healed. That means that your possibilities are determined by your hear weight. Your possibilities are determined by your hear weight. Your hearing. This year, be intentional about tuning into the hear waves of the Spirit and of the Word of God. Be in tune with the Spirit on your inside. Be led of the Spirit. Number two, what happened? She spoke. She spoke. Have you heard it before that a closed mouth is a closed destiny? They were not joking. No. They were just telling you in a very pratic, pragmatic way a truth that is found in scriptures. She said to herself, listen, confession is not what you say in public. Confession is what you say to yourself in private. It's not important that you come to church and say, I know I'm a child of God. I know things are going to work. What do you tell yourself when you are alone? When you stand in front of the mirror, what do you tell yourself? I'm so ugly. Look at this part. Look at this. Uh, I have never believed that I was ugly even when my ears were standing like this. I cannot be. It was my word that confirmed it to make them come back. In fact, some of the reasons why I can never do skin is that I am afraid that the hair will still come out like that. Nobody. Do you know that those people who say they are fine, they are awesome, they are awesome, they are awesome. Sometimes they are not even answered. But because they keep saying it, you see that the radiance starts coming in. But I've seen people who are so beautiful and they will still be saying, am I fine? Because they are not toasting you. Are you supposed to be a dog they follow everywhere? You need a man! You don't need men. <laughs> Your possibilities are determined by what you hear. She spoke. To herself. Your confession is not to the world. It's primarily to you. What you say in private is more important. Have I said that to you? Romans chapter 10 verse 10, 14, 28 of the book of Numbers. The Bible says, surely have you have spoken in my ears? So will I do. And then number three, she acted. Now, this is the difference. The Bible says, as she believed God, she, she had, then she believed, and then she came. Can you see that? There was an action. That's why I say faith is active. There was an action. She did something about it. What are you doing? What are you doing? This year you must start doing in order to increase your productivity. 
You must apply for a new job. Jo stop hoping I will get a new job. Somebody will find me on LinkedIn. And of course, they find people on LinkedIn is positioning. LinkedIn is a positioning. But you must also apply. You are better than your presentness. There is graceness residing on your inside. You can do more. You can become more. True faith will always involve an act. True faith will always involve an act. For her, it was coming to Jesus. For some people, it is leaving a terrible relationship. That's faith. I was talking to a, young, to a woman. I said, let her leave that relationship. He said, you talk this way. Don't you know where he left me? you question? That means that uh, the, night, the night of a woman quickly falls. <laughs> That's the Yoruba way of saying it just literally. It means that a woman's uh, time span for getting her husband or living is not, is not, is not so long. It is short span. Mm -hmm. Short span. So she, she said it. I said, oh, I said, I agree. He said, she now wanted, he said, listen, sir, do you know that your ovaries are the age of your, of, of your age? I said, I don't know. He said, you know that my, I'm, I'm like 36 now. My ovaries are 36 years old. I said, oh, really? Is, is, is that supposed to be like a revelation? That's not stupid. I mean, it's, are you not, are you, is it supposed to be different? He said, you know, so it means that I, 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 if a woman gets to 41, 42, she'll be able to reproduce anymore. I said, oh, really? Hmm, hmm. Deep wisdom. Deep wisdom. I said to her, I said, if she marries that person, it is the next day that her night will fall. The next day. It's not going to take years. The next day. Because when they put that ring on it, you will calm down. You will now discover there's no way out. So that that darkness, you say, will fall by lifespan. It will just fall in a matter of days. Because sometimes when they just slap you, palm like this, it will clear. So that, I now told her, listen to these folks, eggs don't make children. Eggs don't make children. If not, the number of people in the world now should be like 20 billion or 500 billion. With some random sex some people are having. And with certain of our parents who never even use any concept. How do you put it? Contracept. It means that every time they come together, a child should appear. In fact, the idea of a waiting mother means they are trying. If they are not trying, they will not be called waiting. So that it is not sex that guarantees children. It is God's will that guarantees children. I told her. I said, I know somebody who got married at the age of 23. She waited till 39 to give birth to a child. And she married at the party. I know someone who married at 39. Sorry, her husband was 39. She was 40. So that even the age of the ovary and the age of the span were supposed to have been dead. 39 and 40. In a year, they had a boy. In a year. And that means that I lay or join in that night. So we began to count it for them before we know whether we should put them on that church discipline. The night, nine months, he was out. The boy came out looking. For, the boy is like, Fufu. you know, evil boy. You will know that this is a genuine spam. What made this one? It's not, listen, what you tell yourself is just stupid doctrine that put pressure on you. Do you know how many people are doing IVF? In their 20. Not that they have slept around. Virgins. Your life is in God's hand. Your time are in his hand. Let him choose your inheritance for you. Let him choose your inheritance for you. Faith puts you in a rest. They were not able to enter into the rest because of unbelief. Unbelief is the reason people don't live in rest all the days of their life. So that married people you see are not always restful. Some of them are in war. There is war in the city. Fight each other morning, noon, and night. And they come out wearing the same clothes. 
because we live in a deceptive world. Where did I start from? Where was I coming from? I know where I'm going. She acted. Your faith will make you do something. Listen, for some people, it's to close the door of your house and start dancing. Dancing that I'm married this year. Just dance. That, because if you are, you will dance. Some people, what you make them do is to rejoice. Rejoice because you've gotten a good job. Rejoice. There is an act to faith. For some people, they will give. Oh, glory to God. I'm so in this seat. You see, there is a response to faith. And then number four, audacious faith will always lead you to Jesus. Faith in God does not lead to a mountain, a prophet, or to PFA. True faith leads to Christ. Audacious faith leads to Jesus. It is not the faith of God if it doesn't lead you to Jesus. Faith leads you to him. All true scriptures, they came to him. True faith will lead you to his presence. I hope you are resolute about staying with Jesus this year. Faith in Christ must lead you to cry out to God like those guys did. Blind peep, blind guys. Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon us. And we found the result of our audacious faith in Mark chapter 5 verse 30. This woman and Jesus immediately knew that power had gone out of it. Jesus knew. That means that it was our touching that released the power. It wasn't Jesus praying or Jesus blessing. It was I that activated the power. Mark 5, 34. Daughter, your faith. Wait, wait, wait. Jesus said what? Mark 5, 34. He said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Please, help me look for faith in the scripture we read. Ask me, is there a place in the place we read that they talk about faith? Where is our faith? Your faith has made you well. It was an act of coming. That was our faith. It was a heart of coming. So I want to finish by asking you a question. What made the woman go? Do you have to? I wish I'm like uh, be wasting. I say for hundred dollars. Do you have takers? Do you have takers? What ill this woman? What made her whole? What did you say? A heart. And anybody else? What made her whole? A faith. Partly so. What made her whole? A boldness. Partly so. I believe. Faith is not even belief. I was still going to get there. But I believe. Glory to God. Partly so. Because she believed. And she came. <laughs> All of you have 50-50. But I think somebody said the answer. Don't think. Don't think. Don't think. Leave that thing. Those who know. We are in a knowing class. No, that's, that's you just doing something. <coughs> She acted on it. On her faith. Partly so. 50%. No. No. One minute more. One minute more. For a dinner with my wife. <laughs> she thought. Ah no. That's not even partly so. What did you say? A conviction. No. 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 30 more seconds. No, she has always taken risk. <laughs> Audacious, no. No, no, ma. I can't, don't, don't use synonyms. Don't use synonyms for me. That's not the answer. <laughs> a faith in Christ. She had faith in Christ. I said somebody said it. But I, did I not give you a clue? I said, I think somebody said it before. It was not just faith. It was faith built in Christ. Who said that? Have faith in Christ. So, a dinner with my wife, but you are the one paying. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have faith in Christ. You see, it's not just faith. It's a faith as an object. Do you understand? It, it's not, it, you see, okay, okay. I, I wasn't going to go there in this teaching. I was going to go there in other teaching. But, so, I, I, I don't, you, you don't go home like, I just want to confuse you. When you are not so rich and you don't have a car, 
and you stop a car outside and say CMS and it stops. And then you enter. Are you sure it's taking you to CMS? Are you sure it's taking you to CMS? Your faith in the driver. You see that? Your faith in the driver. Because he can get to Osaka London Junction and enter inside. If he enters inside, you begin to look around. Hey, how many of us are here? Who can I shout? So you are waiting for Egbamio because you know that Osapa does not lead to CMS. But you are not part of. You just enter because you have faith in that driver. I'm telling you that faith always has an object. Faith always has a belief in a thing. When it comes to the Christian faith, the object of the belief is in Jesus. Not in your pastor. He had faith in Jesus. Now, we are going to get there in this teaching. Where you are going to learn why people's faith does not work. But I've told you that what you just said, even now, is hope. It's not faith. Aha, it's not faith. Uh, when I will get there and it will happen, I will. Anytime you use I will, it's a futuristic tense. It's not faith. You see, what we have, what I'm trying to do in this season is to correct some religious things that we have in our head. So that our faith, and what you have heard, share with people. Invite people next. Let them know that way. I've not even finished. <laughs> I think we should just finish. You know, in conclusion, all these things kind of just lead to one another, right? She had, she said, and then she came. She told Jesus. She did something about her faith. Could it be that to experience the miraculous, we must act? Allow me to say to you that if you have stopped at only hearing, if she has stopped at only hearing, there will not be anything. If she has stopped at only believing, there won't be anything. Because she could believe, like you were saying, she could believe that if I told Jesus, I will be healed, I'll be holy. If I told Jesus, I'll be holy. If I told Jesus, I'll be holy, I'll sleep. She believes. She believes that Jesus can heal her. She believes. All right. But without her coming to Jesus, without her touching the garment, she will not have been made up. So all of this leads to one another. What you hear, what you say, must lead you to her. Bow down your head, bow down your head. I know you will still have many more questions, but that's why it's called a journey. It's a series. Close your eyes, bow down your head. And begin to say, Lord, what I have heard today, what I have heard today will bless me. I want you to talk to God and say, Lord, I receive the spirit of faith. Scripture says we also have in the same spirit of faith will believe. And therefore have we spoken. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you for listening. This has been The Living Word. If you have been blessed by this teaching or for counseling or any other inquiry, kindly send us an email to pfa at the ransomedhouse.com or fisayoadenii at yahoo.com or please call 0912-772-3824. The Ransomed House, empowering people to live for Jesus.